alternative title, maybe it's misogyny, maybe it's witchcraft, but it certainly ain't Maybelline. Because we're starting this list with number one, cosmetics. In 1770, a proposal for a new law in England would have made it legal for a man to divorce his wife on the grounds that she had been using witchcraft to enhance her looks and trick him into marriage. Yes, false hairs, scents, paints, cosmetic washes, artificial teeth and high-heeled shoes would have been seen as witchcraft. And women who used them would be tried for witchcraft and have their marriage voided if found guilty. Also like executed, also like it didn't really pass. So number two, what's more trustworthy than a woman? A child. In 17th century Sweden, if a child says you're a witch, your fate is pretty much sealed. And you know what that meant, right? Klaus, you were supposed to be doing your chores. You do know it's the middle ages and I can totally cane you. Right? Of course this only worked if the child was a boy. Daughters of witches were automatically witches themselves. Number 3. Mac. In Viking societies, women were the ones who handled the household's finances because the men thought math was witchcraft. I don't know. Sounds like an excuse for Ivor not to do his taxes. Number 4. Having friends. Oh my god, I love your lip paint. So glad the royal counselors didn't ban this. Oh, thank you. Now let's sacrifice some goats, bestie. A group of women congregating without a male chaperone were basically seen as a coven meeting to worship the devil. Number five, having a job. The jobs women would have in this time mostly involved healthcare, childcare, food preparation, dairy production, or livestock care. And what were witches most often responsible for? Illness, death of young children, poisoning the food, spoiling the milk, as well as killing off livestock and poor crop yields. What most men did was chop wood and hit rocks all day. What could go wrong? So it's estimated 10 to 30 percent of witches were men. Because if a cow dies, the milkmaid is responsible. In fact, it seems that any natural misfortune was just the work of a woman nearby. But going to the last one, number six. Infertility. This one I find funny because when Agnes from next door has six kids and all of them get the flu or something, she can say, That devil worshipper did this. She cannot have children and is jealous of mine. But you could totally hit back with the, Oh no, I was like totally cursed by a witch and that's why I have no kids. Maybe it's my neighbor Edith from across the street. Oh no, my child, like 40% of all children in this historical period, died during infancy. But that was definitely the work of a witch and not our lack of medical knowledge. Guess it's not Edith either. Hmm. Hey, wait a minute. 40%? What's 40%? She knows math. Get her! Let's be honest, witchcraft was just an easy way to dispose of medieval Karens. Any woman that annoys you can be a witch, mostly because the methods for getting a confession were essentially Okay, to test if you are a witch, I will boil you alive in this large pot of oil. Mm-hmm, okay. If you fry, you are a witch. Yes, that's fair. Or you can confess you are one now and then we put you in the pot and you like, die. Okay, what? And to sum up this video, witch trials all boil down to medieval men hating to see a medieval girl boss winning. That's all, 